channel and if you're new, welcome to my channel. I have teamed up with some awesome ladies who I will link below to do a Valentine's collaboration. Uh, we decided to create different things. Um, it started kind of with like Valentine's Day treats that were healthy and Weight Watchers friendly and it just kind of blossomed from there. So not everybody is doing food. Some people are just doing DIYs. Um, some things will be kid friendly that you can make with your kitties. Um, so yeah, I made these delicious one point cheesecake stuffed strawberries. Like they, they're really good guys. They're so good. And they might even be less than one point because the serving and the way it all came out, I have a lot left. So that's what we have here. Also, if you know me at all, I am super crafty. I love doing crafts and DIYs and that's just what I do. Like that's kind of like my free time thing. And one of my like most favorite crafts is wreaths, which I have shared a little bit on my channel previously. I've made this very budget friendly heart wreath. It's super cute. I will insert a picture of it hanging on our door here. And guys, this didn't cost me anything to make. I had everything I needed here at my house and it was super easy. It is a little tedious and tiny bit time consuming. Um, I started it last night and finished it this morning, but it's really easy. So if you're interested in seeing how to make these delicious strawberries or the really cute Valentine's Day wreath, stay tuned and keep watching. Here are the ingredients you're going to need for your cheesecake stuffed strawberries. First thing you're gonna need is a pint of strawberries. This recipe makes approximately 28 stuffed strawberries. So I have two pints just in case. For our cheesecake filling, you're going to need eight ounces of cream cheese or mascarpone cheese softened at room temperature. We're trying to keep this Weight Watchers friendly, so I'm using a third less fat cream cheese, uh, which is store brand from Giant. The mascarpone cheese is actually double the points for eight ounces, so I highly recommend the third less fat. Next thing you're going to need for this cheesecake stuffing is two tablespoons of powdered sugar, or some people call it confectioner sugar, or they call it baker sugar, or frosting sugar whatever you call it. You're gonna need half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Unfortunately, when I purchased my vanilla extract, as you can see, I accidentally bought imitation vanilla extract. So I'm going to use this because that's what I have. You're also going to need two teaspoons of lemon juice. Okay. This is completely optional. I bought a Hershey's Special Dark Chocolate Bar. I'm only going to use one block of it and I'm just going to kind of grate it over top the strawberries for garnish. One block of it is one point. As for utensils from your kitchen, you're going to need a bowl and a fork or spoon to mix your cheesecake stuffing with. Personally, I mix my cake mixes and stuff like that. Everything I mix with a fork, I just feel like it gets the job done better. You could always use a hand mixer. Um, I just prefer a fork. Next, you're going to need a knife to trim the top of the strawberry and to slice the uh, side that we'll be putting the filling in. Optional, if you wanted to do it a different way, which I can show you, you could always use a melon baller to kind of hollow out the middle of the strawberry. You're going to need a plate to display your strawberries on and be able to use to refrigerate them on. And a piping bag with a star tip. If you don't have those items, which I know a lot of people wouldn't, you can always use a Ziploc bag and cut the corner off of it. That would work just as well. I've definitely used that before. Lastly, aside from the measuring spoons that I showed you with the ingredients, you're going to need, if you decide to go the option with the chocolate, 
a grater to help grate your chocolate for your garnish. Okay, the first step to making our strawberries is to cut the tops off, which I've done for each of these strawberries. For the one, uh, according to the recipe, you cut the top off and you flip it upside down. That's your flat surface. And then you slice it crisscross wise. So your filling will go in there. That's just using the knife. The second option, which I have done before, you cut the top of it off up here. You cut the tip of it off so it stands. And then you can use your melon baller to hollow out the inside of it. As you can see though, there's a lot more waste and work to this option. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick to the option that the recipe shows. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this with all of our strawberries. I've gone ahead and trimmed all of our strawberries and sliced them crisscross style. And I have 25 here and for the sake of symmetricalism and the fitting on the plate, I'm gonna leave it at that. But again, this does make 28 strawberries total. I used pretty much one whole pint and then I took a few out of that one just to get a good size strawberry. Some of them are really small. So the next step is to mix our cheesecake filling. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and make our filling for our strawberries. I've gone ahead and put the softened cream cheese in the bowl, as you can see. I have two tablespoons of our powdered sugar. I'm just gonna dump that right in there. And then I need a half teaspoon of our vanilla extract. So I'm going to measure that. This is a handy little measuring spoon I got from Pampered Chef, if anyone's wondering. And remember, it's a imitation, so that's why it's clear and not brown. And then I need two teaspoons of lemon juice. So we have one and two. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and blend all of this together with my fork. You're good. Okay, so I have everything mixed pretty well, it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and spoon this into my um, piping bag. And uh, you could do this with a Ziploc bag as well, but I just kind of draped it over a cup to kind of make it easier. Um, or if you have a handy helper helping, you can have them hold the bag as well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just get this in there. And if you don't know if you have it mixed up all the way, you can always squish it around in the bag to make sure it's blended easy. Try to make sure I got it all out of the bowl, although I'm sure my husband would probably not mind eating the leftovers. He's holding the camera and shaking his head yes. So we'll save that for him and I'll go ahead and get this together. Okay, so next step, almost the last step, is to fill your strawberries. As you can see, I've already done one just to kind of gauge how easy or hard it is. Um, the hardest part is just making sure you can get the strawberry open enough, but you're just gonna squeeze a blob in there. So I'm gonna go through all of my strawberries and I'm going to fill each one of them with our filling. Um, I know I've said it a billion times, but this should make 28 strawberries. And I'm guesstimating you're probably putting about a, a tablespoon of filling into each strawberry. All right, so as you can see, we have all of our strawberries filled. And to be honest with you, the recipe shows 28. Well, this is how much I have left. And that's at least, I only use about half of it. And this is 25 strawberries. So. Um, you could even probably say that these are less than a point, but we're going to be on the safe side and say they are one point. Stop. Okay, so I'm going to serve mine on this pretty little plate, and I have a little block of my Hershey's dark chocolate, which is melting in my hand, in my grater. And I'm just going to grate a little bit on top, just for like a garnish to make it look all fancy pants. Obviously you can put as little or as much as this of this as you want. You could probably even melt it up and uh, drizzle the chocolate on top. There you go. Super cute and fancy and delicious. My husband's already tried one. And yeah. So that's how easy it is to make the strawberries. 
I hope that you try them and you find that they're super delicious. I'm just one point for Weight Watchers, smart points. And if you want to keep watching, we're about to enter part two of this video in how to make your Valentine's Day wreath for zero dollars. I've been told that uh, needle nose pliers or uh, tweezers would be helpful as well. So if you have those, might as well pull them out. The first step in this project is you're going to want to fill your bowl about an inch deep of water and you're going to want to basically color your water whatever color paint you're using. So since it's Valentine's Day, we're going to use red paint or I'm going to use red paint. And so I'm going to just put some of this in the bowl and use the paintbrush to mix it around until it gets to the color that I want. And basically what we're going to be doing is uh, soaking our coffee filters into the dyed water. Okay, I've gone ahead and squirted some paint into my bowl of water and I'm just kind of mixing it around. As you can see, it's pretty dark. It's a pretty good color. So I'm going to just make sure that's mixed really well. We're not finished with the paint or the paintbrush yet, so don't put it away. But next you're going to want to put your um, coffee filters into your bowl. So you want to do a little stack. So not this thick, um, just divide it up to maybe about that thick. And you're just going to flip it upside down into the water and just leave it there for a few seconds and then pull it out. And you want to do that with all of them. Okay, so once you have all of your coffee filters soaked in your dyed water, you're going to want to use a dark colored towel to just let them dry on. And this will take a few hours. Um, as you can see, this is the first one I soaked and I left it in there much longer than the rest of them. And you see it went all the way up, which is fine. Um, but once they're dry, or almost all the way dry, you're gonna pull them apart. And then I'll show you the next step. But while we're waiting for them to dry, there's something else we can do. While you're letting your coffee filters dry, you're gonna to want to cut some of your cardboard out and draw the shape that you want. Um, typically, you'll probably do a heart, but I was just playing around and I did the word love you'd have to make sure you keep the letters connected in certain areas. So if I have enough coffee filters left, I'll probably go ahead and do the word love because I think it's cute. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and draw out a heart. You can always do the old fashioned heart where you take a piece of paper and you draw the half thing on the corner. And then when you unfold it, it's like a perfect symmetrical heart. I actually like the look of an imperfect heart. I just think it's cuter and so yeah. Um, let's see here. I feel more pressure that I'm being watched. Okay, so that is going to be my wreath. Now I need to figure out if I want this line to be the inside or the outside of the wreath. And it's looking kind of small, so I'll probably measure about half an inch to an inch outside of the heart all the way around and then outline it. Um, so I will come back with that when I'm finished. Okay, I've gone all the way around my heart and it wind up being an inch. So I just kind of went around and just made some dots. You kind of have to use your own judgment in the center. As you can see, I have like 4,000 dots there. So, um, and then from the bottom of the heart, I did one inch out and then so I could connect them. And basically that's exactly what I'm doing now. I am connecting the dots. And then once you're finished, this is the fun part of cutting this out. Okay, so now that I've drawn the heart all the way around the outside, I'm going to cut our heart out. And I've already started as you can see, and it makes life a lot easier if you cut in in certain areas. Um, that way it's shorter pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, got the whole heart cut out and I have to cut out the middle, which I'm sure is going to be the hardest part. So I'm going to use the help of a box cutter. Um, if you have an X-Acto knife, that would probably be much easier. Um, my idea that I have, hopefully it'll work the way I'm planning, is I'm going to kind of cut a section out of the middle so there's a hole there and I'm just gonna cut sections that way. So I have, I'm gonna cut it little section by little section. 
Um, and just for protection of whatever surface you're cutting on, you might wanna use a piece of the cardboard that you're not using um, as your buffer. So let's see how this works. Right to the edge of the heart. Just be sure you don't cut the heart in half. And my idea is that if we go down the line of the heart where you drew, These pieces should easily come out. Let's see. I mean, obviously it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be covered. So there you go. So I'm going to do that for the rest of the heart. Okay, now that I've cut out my heart completely, I am going to go ahead and use my marker and I'm going to dot all over it and basically the dots are going to be where we're going to poke holes through it um and that's how we are going to put our what they're going to look like carnations it's our coffee filters we're going to poke them through the wreath so i'm going to go ahead and uh dot up my heart and i'm going to use my screwdriver to poke holes through it Okay, so I decided that um, I dotted a little bit and I decided I'm going to alternate the dots all the way around it. So when you're putting holes in your cardboard, you're going to want to have at least two layers uh, from what I'm looking at. Um, so you don't poke holes in your table, but you're just going to stab through and you want the screwdriver to go all the way through the hole. That way you know that you won't have any issues when, you're, when we go ahead and put our um, coffee filters in there. So yeah, I'm gonna go all the way around my heart. As you can see, I've poked holes all the way around my wreath and made sure all the holes go completely through it. So we're gonna set that to the side and the next step you're gonna wanna do, these are not completely dry yet, so I'm just gonna flip them all over and we are going to do one last touch with the coloring on them. And basically what we're going to do is take your paint, you can squirt it on a plate or however you want to do it you just want to get a little paint actual paint on your paintbrush and you want to here, I'll pick these up you want to go around the edges all the way around on every single one and this will this will really make the carnation look realistic so you kind of want to go around you can keep them stacked you don't have to do it individually because you'll be there all day um so yeah while they're halfway dry you want to go around each little stack of them and darken up the edges. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and let it dry and then show you what we're going to do next. Okay guys, so as you can see, I have all the edges painted. So they're a little bit darker. To me, it already looks pretty cool. It's like that ombre look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let these set. I'm going to let them dry the rest of the way. Um, it's actually like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, so I'm probably not going to finish this till tomorrow morning. Um, so that'll give it plenty of time for them to dry. And then we will get on to the next step. Hey guys, so it's morning now and um, my coffee filters are for the most part dry. Some of the thicker stacks are a little damp, but I actually uh, am realizing it makes it a little work easier to work with them if they're a little bit damp. So basically what you wanna do is you want to get one coffee filter, pinch it in the middle, and just kind of bunch it to how you like. You're going to just twist up the bottom like this, and you're going to thread it through your hole. Now one thing I learned actually is it's very, very easy actually for them to get stuck together. So this is doubled, and I was wondering why I couldn't fit this through the hole all the way so it was like standing up really high um, so you can definitely see the difference so just make sure um, you are only using one at a time it will make your life much easier for you and I am finding that tweezers are coming in handy both for separating the coffee filters and helping get them through the hole so I will show you just 
stick it in that little hole right there and pull it through. You don't want to pull it through too much and you can just kind of arrange it and you don't have to use every single hole on your wreath. Uh, you can kind of use your own judgment as you go through. Um, but obviously the idea is to fill your whole wreath with these little carnations. Another thing I did grab that I I didn't really think about is you might want to get some ribbon or uh, like a like bow or of something that you can tie around the top so that way you can put it on display. So this is just kind of from a gift bow. Um, so anything will work fine. So I'm going to go ahead and complete uh, threading my coffee filters through the wreath and we will be back to show you what it looks like when it's finished. All right. So I finished. I think it looks really, really cute. Um, I do want to show you a little tip that I did. I ran out of the smaller filters and had to use the bigger filters, um, which you can't even tell when you're looking at it, I don't think at least. Um, however, they are longer so and they're much thicker uh, when you like twist it up. So um, I actually had to trim them all on this side to make the little, whatever you want to call these things, um, even that way it didn't sit on your door or wherever you're putting it like lopsided um, So if you can I would definitely use the smaller ones They're much easier to get through the little holes unless you have a bigger piece of cardboard and you poke bigger holes in it But yeah, I think it turned out really really cute So I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna put this ribbon on it and tie it in a little bow and hang it on a door all right guys, here is the finished product all hanging up. I really like how it came out. I think it's super adorable and festive. Um, again, I just used some ribbon and used the wreath holder, so yeah. Okay guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find both things fun and easy to do. If you decide to make the strawberries or the wreath, leave the link to your video below so I can take a look I would love to see and if you have any other ideas for me leave them below as well uh, be sure to check out all the ladies that I've linked below in their videos and thank you very much for watching and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already bye guys happy heart day